Mythic! Mythic with a four rare deck. Let's go. Yeah! Smashing. Let's go. Hey, hey, it's Mythic Mike. We're here with the best Insidious Roots deck ever. By far, I spent literally 15 hours over two days doing this. I'm in a Discord chat. I shared like 30 versions, some with red, some with white. I tried to put blue in Insidious Roots. I did so many versions of this deck, a Delirium deck. I'm telling you, this one works. It is a masterpiece. Check it out for yourself. Um, the, the missing pieces were honestly these two cards. Um, Unstoppable Slasher is just amazing in Insidious Roots. Insidious Roots, right, the whole point of the deck is that whenever a card leaves your or a creature card leaves your graveyard so you can exile your creatures or they come back or something then you make a zero one green plant token and put plus one plus one on all your plants then the more you do it you get more plants and they keep growing uh really big unstoppable slasher is hilarious because it's like right on curve you play this then you play slasher and if they kill your slasher by the way slasher is just a powerhouse by itself because if it deals damage to target player they lose half their life um it comes back right that's one of its abilities when it dies if it had no counters on it return to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control with two stun counters on it then two turns it actually will be back but if you play this turn two this turn three they kill your slasher it'll come back and trigger insidious roots automatically people rage quit it's hilarious urborg also i know people tried this card a long time ago but it's busted now especially in the shell because of all the reanimation stuff, as well as how we build our deck. But Urbarg, if you don't know, three mana, two, two, when it enters or attacks, so it's on enter and attack, um, exile target card from a graveyard, including opponents, put a plus one plus one counter on this, so it'll always attack in the first turn is a three, three, right? Um, and then this has all the abilities of the creature it exiled, so flying, double strike, lifelink, haste, whatever, right? What's crazy is think about all the moth decks or all the reanimator strategy decks where they ditch an Atroxa or the new Valgamoth thing, you know, Flying Lifelink, all these things. We exile this on, you know, so they can't bring it back. And we get Flying Lifelink Vigilance on a 3-3. And then we attack again and we exile the next thing. Honestly, messes up a ton of strategies. But with Insidious Roots, too, we'll just exile our own things. And it'll get an Insidious Roots trigger, right? every time it enters and attacks. Also, most of our things have keywords, like even this has death touch if we exile it. So this will be a three, three death touch. Um, but also we do have two, I'll get into this. I think you could play two of these or two of these. I'm very, very torn. So I put one and one, um, but on the first turn, because these both have trample and haste, you exile one of these from your graveyard. This has trample and haste. It can attack the same turn. You can exile another card from your graveyard. Now it's a 4-4 four, four Trample Haste, and it might have another ability like Death Touch. And you've triggered Insidious Roots twice. So it is great with the deck. It's great even if we don't have Insidious Roots because of how we set it up and how opponents set up their decks these days. So honestly, like, this package is insane. And then when you add Overlord, I mean, like, yeah, believe me, this thing works. Overlord, right, it's an Insidious Roots trigger because when you play it for 5 or when you play it for 2, it 2 just takes longer to get a, become a creature. Um, then you mill four cards and return a creature card, Insidious Roots trigger, and then whenever it's a creature, whenever it attacks, you do the same thing. This gets around board wipes and temporary lockdown, which used to mess up Insidious Roots deck. Note that we have a lot of bigger creatures. Um, this one comes back, and this gets around pretty much everything. So we can actually do well against control because of that. And we got some trample haste threats, right? Now, Snarling is very important in this version of the deck. Um, whenever a creature you control power two or less enters surveil one, it has menace, so we can steal menace. Pretty cool. Um, and then all of our creatures here, until we get to here, even these, even our three drops have two power, so we're going to be surveilling a ton, milling a ton. Brood spider, when it enters surveil two, reach, we can give it reach. Uh, we can give this reach by right exiling it. Um, and so if we play this and then this turn two, we'll surveil three, so we're going to really find what we want. And for six mana, you sacrifice it and you get a bunch of 1-1 one, one flying creatures equal the number of different cards, types of cards in your graveyard. So you'll get four to six, you know, 1-1s one, late game. They'll tap for mana because this taps your tokens for mana. So absolutely insane. Now, um, 
this too, right, comes back from the dead. Insidious Roots Trigger comes back from the dead and surveils as an Insidious Roots Trigger. Um, you can put a counter on something. Uh, this one has lifelink, so you can, you know, if this is in our graveyard, we can exile it, give this lifelink. I mean, a 3-3 lifelink that's growing ain't bad, right? And besides just like the lifelink ability and death touch, which is going to mess them up, we do have a pretty good mono red package. I don't think we directly counter it, but we do not just die to it like many Insidious Roots decks do because it's really hard to fit removal in. Four Disfigure and four Harvester of Misery. Uh, Harvester Misery is really, really good here because you can play it for big, late, and everything gets minus two, minus two, which comes up. Um, but you can just use it as removal for two mana, something gets minus two, minus two. And then the cool thing is this is in our graveyard Aut automatically when you do that. So then you can exile with this. This will get menace and plus one, plus one. Um, additionally, you can bring it back with this, which is really one of the coolest parts to play it as removal again or to play it on the big side because this only brings back creatures, but this is removal on a creature. So this is a package I've shown before. Very, very sick. We got some like surveil lands and a creature land. This one helps us with Insidious Roots because it exiles something from a graveyard. Um, one Alcazots, right? You can get it back late game after we mill it for a wing con. Flying Lifelink makes him discard, comes back from the dead. That's an Insidious Roots trigger too, because it does the same slasher trick, goes in your graveyard, comes out. Um, additionally, if it's in our graveyard, we can exile it with this because this has flying and lifelink. I mean, a growing flying lifelink is not bad, guys. It's a banger. Now to the last decision point. I played most of the games with two of these. I played like the last game with two of these and I'm really, really torn. This feels like it's the better card. And especially as I played more. So I think it might be. So maybe put two of these. It's up to you what you want to play here. They're very close. This one, right? The new one, it can't be countered. 5-5, five, five, Trample Haste. And Delirium, if you have four different things in your graveyard, bring it back from your graveyard. So if you mill it even, and it has a finality counter on it. Now, obviously this goes really well because it's an Insidious Roots trigger when it comes back. We're milling things. Um, additionally, you know, you can still exile it with this. Um, to So this comes in with uh, Haste, right? Um... So that's still nice, although it does feel bad to do it. You just have to do it, right? And there's no reason to hold the card out because of that. Um, my thought, though, was, number one, we're exiling a lot with this. We're exiling a lot of things from our graveyard. But what I realized is we do just surveil and mill so much that you actually do get to Delirium in this lot, which is why I think this is good. Now, our lands are more black-focused, so it is a little harder to cast unless we have tokens. So, you know, there's an argument for doing two Get Rock. And here's the argument I'll give you for Get Rock. It's Trample Haste. We don't feel bad about exiling it. It's a 6-5. And it has this Saddle ability, right? Um, it's easier to cast, too, because of the lands. But whenever it deals combat damage to a player, if we saddled it, so we, like, mounted with one, a creature with at least one power, we tapped a creature. Um, if we did that, and this deals damage, you may sacrifice the creature that saddled it, draw X cards where X is, and put X lands from your hand on the battlefield where X is sacrifice creature's power. So, you know, late game, we can, like, sacrifice one of these to draw four cards, right? Or something crazy. So that has some legs. And again, we are often just exiling it so you don't get the benefit. This feels like it might, whatever, play whatever you want. I put one and one. You'll see in the games I kind of switch. But besides that, I'm very certain about the rest of the deck. And these are very comparable. So if you already have one, just play whatever you have. Now, the last point I'll make on Insidious Roots is the reason I think this deck is awesome is because there's two ways to play Insidious Roots generally. One is you use like Tyvar. By the way, I have a kind of cool Tyvar version now because it can combo with other things, but Tyvar decks with Insidious Roots are trash, generally, uh, because they can go infinite and do cool things, but they're only really good if you hit Insidious Roots. There's four copies of Insidious Roots, and there's so much enchantment hate. They're going to kill Insidious Roots all the time. You can't just have Tyvar sitting on there only really relevant when Insidious Roots, you know, and you're like bringing back like these. That's not a good game plan. It's fun, but it's trash. Sorry, guys. Um, now, I've never put Tyvar in, in a Insidious Roots deck, to be honest. Now, the um, actually, there's probably three ways to do it. The second way is you find, a, I have a squirrel deck. Check it out if you haven't a squirrel, a three mana green squirrel, not the two mana squirrel, where you like always find your Insidious Roots and bring it back. So it's like a tutor. 
That one might be a little slow in this meta with mono red, but that's another way where you build your deck around Insidious Roots, but you just keep finding it. I think that's not super great, although I made a really, you know, effective version last season when there wasn't this crazy mono red, of course. The third way is you make it so your deck is good even if you don't hit Insidious Roots. And that, I think, is the way you really have to do it. The problem with that is you make like a Delirium deck. Let's say you put four of these, four of these, these trigger Insidious Roots, these trigger Insidious Roots. You put a lot of cool things that trigger Insidious, maybe skeletons, because the skeletons come back and trigger Insidious Roots. And you're like, you put Insidious Roots in, you're like, oh, it helps with Delirium. It's great. Um, you know, I'm triggering it a lot. But then you realize if you just took out the four Insidious Roots and put in some more skeletons or another aggro creature, the deck would be way better. So you're just forcing Insidious Roots in. So what I think the reason this deck is so good is it is that third category of even if you don't hit Insidious Roots, you still have a banger of an aggro shell. But Insidious Roots is also the best card for the slot. And that is very rare. So, you know, let's get into the games. Like and subscribe. You're going to see. Let's go, baby. All right, Lagish. Let's do this. Get out of my house. <laughs> Interesting. <clears throat> so he does get my harvester. Oh, no, he doesn't. Oof. We picked the wrong land. <laughs> So we can play the big side of this next turn because of the... It's pretty crazy. Alright, he is doing stuff too, though. I actually think we will do this instead. Because we can flying lifelink it, right? I mean, I'll take a 3-3 flying lifelink. <laughs> we didn't get our insidious trigger, which maybe I should have done, but I like that. Okay. Interesting. Can get it back, right? And we will. Do we need the lifelink that bad right now? I guess why not? This is about to pop the heck. This feels nice, right? Should have probably done that first, but oh, I 
I guess we'll take Slasher, right? I was wondering why I couldn't play it. <laughs> Bing. Which one, actually? Actually, I will do this, won't I? I guess I want to land. Looks like he's in trouble, right? <laughs> we can give it trample and haste by doing this. What else can we get? That's probably the best one. We thought lifelink. By the way, when they kill this, it's an insidious roots trigger because it goes in our graveyard and comes back. We also could have just got this back and done it. But it's, yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. Um. Is there flying in here? No. Um, I guess we'll just get one of these, right? Make sure you can't beat us in the air. Oh, I probably should have waited, huh? <laughs> uh, we're kind of popping off, though. I probably could have got more things in my graveyard, potentially. Um, do I wait? I guess why not, right? <laughs> this looks pretty good. <laughs> okay. These are all flying, so... Can he somehow pull it off? <laughs> oh my god. What the heck? Oh. <laughs> All right, Lord Fader, let's go. Really nice. This has two power, and most of our things have two power, right? Even our Urbrog thing, or whatever it's called. Two two that comes in and exiles or stuff. <laughs> Next turn insidious. Turn after that success. I do want to land though. Okay. Little control pile. Will he have? Probably will have enchantment hate. Everyone does these days. He'll have the two mana thing that you can kick for four. Oh, I made a duck with this today. Today. Well, today, it probably is like four days ago. I recorded a few days out. I guess this is the way. What kind of one mana black save do you have? I don't know if it exists anymore, but there was a two mana flash black artifact that gave something. Is this insidious? That'd be pretty funny. 
looks like delirium. All right, I would like a land, please. We do have a lot of fun things in here, though. The fact that this triggers Insidious Roots is my favorite thing. Okay. Does that mean we just play it? I think so. If you kill it, we get two Insidious Roots triggers. I mean, if you exile it, we don't. Oh, God. <laughs> People do have exile these days. Dang. It's a bummer. So we can attack with this. That being said, we are going to double trigger Insidious for sure, right? In a second. So we can get the Snarling. Worst case, but I hope we get something better. Hey, we will get another Slasher. Dude, this is the best. Come on. Have you ever seen an Insidious Roots like this? A little Ecor Drinker? Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Dude, I've played literally 5 hours one day, 10 hours the other day, trying all the different decks, putting red in, putting white in. I had a Survivor version of this, where you bring things back with Helping Hand. I had a version where you back for more, the four mana red um, guy that gives all your guy haste in the future. Because then when these come in, they get haste. I tried so many things and they were fun, but they were not consistent. I think we've we've hit it. I thought I was losing my mind. I haven't tried one with blue. We've done it, baby. So that's a fun little thing he's doing. Oh, he does have this, huh? Okay. So we get some little flying guys. That's fun. Oh, he doesn't have a big thing in here. Do we have anything cool? No. best way to do this. So like this, and then we have two left. Oh, I could have brought this back, huh? Oh, I could have brought that back first and then used it. Whoops. I messed that up. What does this have? No reach. It's tricky, huh? Ooh. Oh, the trample thing. All right, he is playing that again. We're going to get the trample thing, though. Does that look in exile? Search your graveyard hand and library. Nope. If this is the only one, we're going to totally blow him out. <laughs> oh, he's got that too, huh? Which one do we get, actually? Maybe we get that one. So we get his haste one, right? Trample haste. We can trigger it again. Ooh. 
we have death touch in here? Does he have flying? We have met. Uh, we have menace. We do. All right, that's the play then. Your graveyard menace. It gets menace. It double triggers insidious. Oh my god, dude. I can't believe I forgot about this card, man. <laughs> oh. Oh. Poor baby. Poor baby. Is he going to get this back? I hope not, because we can stop it. Yes. Looks like we've... Dude, we're crushing some insane decks with this, right? <laughs> Alright, phew, we didn't hit it. Oh, jeez, we can take this? We can get that, huh? Do we get that instead to give it lifelink? Okay, he's taking it. <laughs> it's probably smart. What? <laughs> Let me just win. <laughs> All right, Pantum, let's go. That's not great given what we hit, huh? Ooh, I should have maybe played this so I could have surveilled. Oh, interesting. Well, that's a little tricky. I can't decide. <laughs> For now, I'm doing that. <laughs> so this is pretty cool deck. I mean... This card's just stupid, right? Kind of. Um, but he can, like, triple trigger it really easily. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. All right. Are we fast enough to beat, like, this? We do have a good amount of removal, right? We have eight that can hit it. And we have ways to get our removal back with this. Gets back our heart. Oh, there's some. What's tricky is like, my god, right? Um, so what's nice is we can kill this. This has haste. And then we can use Urbrac on it. So we are going to do that, actually. Is there any reason to have Insidious? Yeah, right, but... Is it too slow for this deck right now? Probably. <laughs> we could start popping off with Insidious, but... Come on! Come on! I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose. I mean, this still feels pretty nice, right? So we're going to kill this. Play this, exile this, now this has haste. This gets the abilities of whatever it exiles. So then it... And we can give it flying and lifelink. Ooh, maybe we're going to win this. Ugh. Why zero? Oh yeah, that makes sense. Oh, I should have killed it beforehand, huh? Did I mess up here? I should have killed it beforehand. Am I going to lose now? Uh, am I going to lose due to that? That would be upsetting. Oh, maybe he doesn't have spells. And then I won't be upsetting.
<laughs> Are we gonna win this somehow? I mean, probably should have left one behind, right? But math is for blockers, baby. Okay. I mean, you're dead if you do that, because I... Uh, he doesn't know how that works, huh? <laughs> Dude. We're not losing right now. Three in a row, baby. Let's go. All right. Fire aggro. Reasonable, right? Two drop would be sick. A two... A two drop... Or our overlord. I mean, there's a lot of fun things that can happen here. Is he going to have the save? Probably, but I think we have to risk it. Perfect. These people just play it out, huh? Oh, I wish we could discard this. I don't think we have discarded. Four in a row, baby. We were going to do something there. Let's go. All right. Exist goes 92. Let's go. We all love this one, huh? It's pretty. All right, what's happening here? I should have looked, huh? <laughs> I didn't. Oh, there we go. Never punished. Um. I mean, why not gain life, right? Why not? Why not gain life? Aye, aye. <laughs> Slasher or Insidious? Dude, Slasher is my favorite thing with Insidious. Let's go. Ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. Let's go. Yeah. Let me think, actually. I have thought, and yeah. For sure. I love that these go in the graveyard. You can just get them back with Overlord. It's one of my favorite Overlord synergies. For sure. Because then you can play it on the big side later. Or just remove it again. Use it as removal again. All right. I think we do just get this down, huh? Let me think, actually. Yeah, we just get this down. I want to trigger if he kills my slasher. Hey! <laughs> this card's not good, but I like that someone's using it. <laughs> All right. I'm glad I took another Harvester. Now you got to pick. I mean, Slasher might solo you, sir. Oh, no. All right, phew. Slasher may solo you, sir. Now, for sure, this deck can still lose to Mono Red Leyline. I mean, we put a good amount of removal in, but like... I'm not putting 13 removal in a um, Insidious Roots deck. It's just not going to happen. Whoa. Don't want that. 
I mean, the fact that these come back, and also the real reason we have these is we can exile them with Urbras to give the or, Urbras or Urbork, whatever it's called, lifelink. But at the same time, they are Insidious Roots triggers. Oh, Jesus. Can't gain life and double. That's pretty good, though. I mean, we will still do that, though. What's funny, what's also really nice about that is that people are doing Atroxa in things really early on, right? And the new 9 mana guy. And we can just exile them so they can't bring it back and then get all the abilities. Not gaining life's annoying. They lose half their life. Oh my god. <laughs> oh no. Menace. Menace makes it hard to deal with, baby. And it's flying. He can't block. Whenever enchanted player is dealt damage, they lose half their life. Round it up. Interesting that he did that. I want to play, but I can't because I'll kill this, right? Okay. My god. No! This card's going to get us, huh? Target player exiles. Do we want to do anything here? Here? Nah, we'll just do that. So I'm bad at math. How many more times do they have to damage me? Probably two. <laughs> so it means I need to win this turn. No, he's gonna break my streak with this. Dude, this. Who thought this card was gonna break my streak, huh? Guess it makes sense though. I guess it makes sense. It's an interesting card. Whoa. What's what, what do I want? Or do I want another creature? No, I guess it's this, right? We needed the counter. Okay. Wait. Whenever enchanted player is dealt... Oh, is dealt damage! <laughs> God, I didn't know what it was. Um, That's good. really good to know, huh? Oh, I should have, um, I'm so bad. I should have played, used this. Would I have won? No. We'll play that so it'll be dead next turn. Oh my god. I was about to resign almost. I thought they said whenever I lose life. Oh, it's whenever I'm dealt damage. So this, will this kill him? He's down to three now. I think it will alongside these, right? Mm -hmm. I will do this so he can't kill me. Oh, if it has a counter on it? So I killed it myself, if it has a counter on it. <laughs> so I gave it a counter. Oh my god, that's really bad. So we still win, though. Because I sacrificed that. If I didn't sacrifice that specific one, we would not have won. But now we win. Because if I had sacrificed one of these... I mean, I guess I could have then sacrificed the other one. Maybe it would have worked out either way, actually. Dude, I can't believe it that I killed my own thing like that. So this grows. 
Dude, we're not gonna lose. Goes to six. What are we, six in a row or something? Let's go. All right, sweet black. We moved up one rung at the start of the season. We're climbing back to mythic, easy, with Insidious Roots. It's only been five in a row. I thought it was six. But you know. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. I mean, as much as I say, oh, no, we did shove enough removal in this deck to have a chance, right? I mean, that's three cards gone. Does he have a creature? That he does. All right. Well, maybe I should have put this, actually. But I kind of just wanted to search for removal. No, thank you. Removal. Come on. Uh, I mean, my god, that's pretty nice for Insidious. Some easy triggers. This has reach. This has reach. Let's go. This feels so nice, guys. I've been playing so many Insidious Roots decks. They all felt like medium, sometimes good. And then I kept saying to myself, if I just took Insidious Roots out of this deck, the deck would be better. <laughs> In like every deck that kind of worked. This is the first deck that just feels so nice with Insidious, right? I mean, if we drew it, we'd just start popping off. Uraborg or whatever his name is really put it over the top. Ugh. All right, our first loss. You can always tell they're about to do it when they start like flashing, right? <laughs> Good game. You did the thing. Good game. <laughs> All right, pods. God, I mean, it kind of looked good, right? I'm keeping it. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. This really shuts down Insidious Roots, huh? <laughs> this says if anything goes in our graveyard. We uh, exile it instead. And there's two of them, so we didn't have to kill it twice. <laughs> now, that being said, can we somehow just aggro it down, right? I mean, what's he going to have? I mean, that might be fine, right? <laughs> this says for six mana, create a number of one, one black insects equal to the number of cards in your graveyard. <laughs> oh no. Although we can do that, huh? It's nice Urbrak can um, exile from any graveyard because we have a 3-3 flying lifelink. I mean, worse things have happened. We do need a land, right, to start. Okay, 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 okay. So land, wait a second. Does he have anything in here? I mean, there's a card, so I guess it'll work, right? So we'll grow. I mean, that's a four, four flying lifelink, dude. Why is this card slept on so much? Awesome again. One more mana and we get this, but I mean, that's perfect. <laughs> Dude, who knew a Leyline deck wasn't going to beat us? That's pretty funny, right? Mill four. We don't want a mill four.
mean, I guess there's nothing in the graveyard, but that's still a 4-4 flying lifelink, so. So this is draw X. Interesting. So this is a sick trick where minus two so that we have slashers in our deck too. Dude, I can't believe he's not winning here. Oh my God, perfect. Do we just win? Dude, that felt so good. <laughs> Are you telling me Insidious Root beats Leyline? <laughs> All right, Popo, let's go, baby. I still can't believe we've actually finally got a good Insidious Roots deck. It really feels nice. Really feels nice. We do want to land, but that'll do. This card is obviously an MVP in Insidious Roots decks. The amount of surveil you get off it if you play your deck with all two power creatures. So I stopped playing as many because I like the Ashnod's Harvester route, which is still good. But we are taking the different path today. And I think you need to. You need a ton of value from Insidious Roots for it to be worth it. Mm. That's sad. Oh my god. <laughs> Give me land. Give me land, sir. I mean, I guess we just have another Overlord if we need to, but... Give me land. We did switch this in. We'll see if it backfires. At first, I didn't have it in. I had Gitrog. Because we are trying to exile this. Which then it won't come back. With this. And we use our graveyard a lot. But at the same time, I mean, we are milling a lot, so the fact that it comes back is probably, yeah, I mean, it's probably just the right card, right? As much as I wanted to try to make my two copies of Get Rog work. I guess we'll get Slasher. I mean, what's funny is this will just be back soon. This will just be back soon. Wow, this game's trying to ruin me, though. <laughs> what? Oh, does this exile? No. What on earth? <laughs> They're trying their best to make us lose. We have 23 lands, I believe. 22 or 23. I don't know what's and we've surveilled like a billion times. <laughs> okay. Alright, phew. I was gonna say, dude, the fact even Slasher has two power. <laughs> Alright, get out of here. Give us more lands. Come on, man. Alright. Dude, these little overlords against control decks, really good. Wow, he's milling us. That is a good land to take. Let's go, baby. Can a control deck hitting their land drops beat us missing our land drops? Why do I feel like now? I mean, he can Sunfall, right? 
If you have Sunfall, you need to Sunfall. <laughs> wow. That can't be good for you. Can kill an enchantment, though. Do I have the haste guy in the graveyard? I do not. He doesn't either. Alright. Um... I guess we're not going to hit his face. Is that weird? I do want to kill this, obviously. I mean, you can see we missed land drops. We missed Insidious Roots. And is it going to matter? <laughs> I think that's... That's the sign of a good Insidious Roots deck. It needs to really, really combo off with it that, number one, it's worth playing in City's Roots instead of another card, which is the biggest problem, right? Think of all the times Insidious Roots helps your deck and you have a great deck, but you could just replace the four Insidious Roots with, like, something better. And then you have all the decks with Tyvar, etc., where they have to hit Insidious Roots or else the deck's terrible. It's rare you get a deck that wins on its own and Insidious Roots is probably the best card for the slot. Sure, I mean, we'll take a slasher, right? <clears throat> no reason not to. I mean, I guess we'll just take... There's, we have nothing in there, right? Yeah. We'll take his Nissa in case there's some kind of reanimation things going ah oh, shoot um this uh i guess it was another surveil i could have done maybe i should have i guess i should just be getting the land for this potentially we'll see these little incubate tokens also are really nice getting around sunfall Right? They come in with haste. Boom! Get out of my house, sir. Get out of my house. Oh, he mills me. I'm so stupid. <laughs> the amount of times I've forgotten that. So we just need a land. We just need a land. Even without a land, we do two damage, right? A land puts a 5-5. Five, five. I mean... <coughs> if this was in our graveyard, we could just be playing it, so... Alright, I was... I'm convinced now. I'm convinced. You need Sunfall, sir. Oh, that works, too. Huh? Are we going to lose, actually? I don't believe it. <clears throat> no. Man, the land think of how many turns we played. We're stuck on lands somehow. Oh, shoot. Why did they do the lands that way? I could have done two disfigures. <laughs> this game is always trying to get me, huh? Literally always trying to get me. We could have just killed it if it wasn't for... And left this up. <laughs> Can we win through lands? Not getting lands. Not getting insidious roots. Misplays. 
Will this deck win anyways? Let's see. So we need to take our one harvest. I mean, this thing for sure. Or else he gets it back. <laughs> oh, no. Come on. I believe. I mean, obviously get back the overlord, dude. What are we doing here? Oh, we can see my balustrade. Maybe he's gonna try to mess up. What the heck? I don't need it to play it though. It's mighty weird. Mighty weird, baby. I guess I'll just kill it, right? What's happening? <laughs> we finally got it. Oh no, we don't have enough lands. I could have played my Getrog. <laughs> I could have played my Getrog. Um, When he takes things from my graveyard, I make those now. <laughs> Am I going to still pull this off somehow? Why aren't we hitting any of the things to bring back? What the heck is happening in this game? Does he know it's going to make two tokens? Now he's getting a lot of stuff too, obviously. <laughs> this is a crazy game, baby. We now have the right lands. Would Get Rog have been better though? Because I could play Get Rog, sacrifice this to draw four cards. You're starting to convince me, guys. <laughs> like and subscribe.